Hey friends! Today we're going to talk about how to make minimalism feel cozier, using this house as an example. And helping me out with that is Johannes. Nice to meet you. This villa is designed in a minimalist style, but the minimalism here feels very cozy. And today we'll explain why that is. Could you please tell me how many square meters this place has? So this villa is a land plot of 350 square meters and the building size is 300 square meters. We've got four bedrooms, four and a half bathrooms, and we also have a TV room that can also be turned into a fifth bedroom for children or for another purpose. The first point I want to talk about is the use of warm wall colors. When designing your home, you don't have to go with cold tones. You can use warm colors like beige, brown, or green. These are all colors that are associated with nature. Natural colors bring a sense of earthiness and authenticity to the interior. In general, when we talk about minimalism, we, we talk about different elements. And of course, we can use colors, but we also use textures. We use recycled materials. We're using plantation. In Bali, there is a lot of uh, greenery and landscape, and it can really help to make a space more warm and more cozy. The second point is plants. Use large plants in big pots instead of small ones. This way, you bring greenery into your interior. If you travel a lot, you can use artificial plants. Nowadays, they make really high quality artificial plants that look just like the real thing. Recently, we showed in one of our videos a Bali-inspired interior we designed in a skyscraper apartment. In that project, we used artificial plants that look just like real Indonesian ones. This house I know is called Black Rock. Could you tell us where the name comes from? What we do with all of our properties, we really want to tell stories with our mm. properties. So I think it's important that when people come here, they can feel the soul of the place. Mm -hmm. um, and we are here in Bali, and the Black Rock in Bali, it's a Batu Hitam, they call it in the local language, is a very traditional stone from this area. And what we try to do with the plantation, with the materials, whether it is timber, whether it is rocks, whether it is materials for finishes, we bring local materials into the space so that you get a sense of destination and a sense of place. So it's a local stone and we've built this whole story around this, uh, these local materials. Really important that when you're designing your interior, you need to add your own idea into it. Right now, there's a big trend when designing homes to incorporate plants that are native to the area. For instance, if you live in northern regions, you should use plants that naturally grow in your climate rather than tropical ones. If you're designing a home or apartment in Central Europe, you could go for birch trees or other familiar local plants. If the project is in a tropical area, then tropical plants are appropriate. That's a growing trend at the moment. And if you're interested in learning more about trends, we recently filmed a video covering what's popular right now. Head over and check it out for more details. Johannes, could you tell us about the different zones here? Let's start with the kitchen. In general, what we are trying to do is we're trying to maximize space. The land prices here are quite high. So you're trying to maximize the space and create a big space on a small space. We're combining the living room with the kitchen area and the outdoor area. So when you close it, you have a cozy space. But when you open it, your space becomes quite big and it feels much bigger. So we're connecting the indoor space with the outdoor space. If you want to visually expand your space, you can use the technique of merging the outdoor area with the indoor space of your home. To achieve this, you can apply the same color scheme and materials. For example, here on the floor, we have a dark gray stone that continues seamlessly outside. It creates the effect of the indoor space flowing into the outdoor area. The entire countertop is made from natural stone and the sink is carved directly into it. It looks like one large solid stone, as if the whole island is a single piece. What's really interesting is that the drain is hidden. There's a special feature that conceals the drain underneath, keeping the look clean and cohesive. So often people create huge kitchens, but they don't actually need that space. So what we have done here, we have got a four bedroom, which means for eight people. And therefore the kitchen has to be designed to cater for eight people. Um, this means the cabinetry, the, of course, sink, and also the storage space. You will see that this kitchen has very little storage space. It's because people come here for two, three, four nights. So they don't need a lot of storage space. You know, friends, when we design in a minimalist style, we focus on using clean straight lines and simple forms. The same goes for the kitchen. For example, we integrate the kitchen into the walls, hide the fridge so it's out of sight, and try to avoid open surfaces. But to make minimalism feel cozier, it's important to have some shelves where you can display decor. This helps break up the flat, minimalist facades and makes the space feel more inviting. 
This is also a current trend, mixing minimalist facades with open shelving to add warmth to the design. When you have a small plot of land and there's not much space between the wall and the fence, you can use windows and plant greenery outside. This way, you create a beautiful view, almost as if you have a garden right outside your wall. Even if there's only 30 centimeters between the fence and the wall, planting it with greenery will look stunning. Make the most of it. Another small idea on making minimalism more textured and more interesting is to bring some of the outside into the space. So for example, what we are doing in a lot of our villas now, we're taking landscape that is outside landscape that can also grow inside, we bring it inside. You know, you can look at, for example, the cactus, or you can look at this. But also in terms of materials, normally we would use recycled timber only on the outside. But you can see here, we have also used recycled timbers for walls to make it more textured. This material is not only used here inside the space, but it's also applied to the building's exterior facades. With a kitchen design, you always work with a triangle. You work a triangle between sink, stove and fridge. This is your magic triangle and has to be efficient. The other thing is how do you use the kitchen? Of course you use it for cooking, but you also want to use it for entertaining. You have the interaction between the guest and the, the chef or between the host and the guests. So you need to create always different usage scenarios for kitchens. For example, one person can be cooking in the kitchen while another person can sit at the table and chat with the one in the kitchen. I have a question about the lighting fixtures. What kind of lights are these? Where did you get them? And why did you choose these knitted lights for the house? Again, I think it is about texture and about contrast. I think usually comfort happens when you create tension. You create tension between some slick materials, whether it's floors or ceilings, all of that, with some warm materials. So this is very rustic, very warm, very simple, but then you have something very sleek and minimalist. So there's this cool contrast with the light knitted fixtures against the backdrop. And actually, the same material is used in other elements of the house, like the wall panel in the living area, which also looks great. When you mix different textures in various places and floors of a space, it creates a cohesive look. So try this trick. What's the plaster on the ceiling and walls? In this climate, um, generally we have two types of options that we use for wall and ceiling finishes. If you want to create a warm feeling, we use normally wooden, wooden ceilings. Why do we use wooden ceilings? Because it creates the space warmer and it cools the floor. In this climate, you want to have a cool floor because it's very warm outside. Here, because we have a lot of rustic elements like the walls, etc., we try to balance the ceilings also with a more cooler material. I really love how different textures are combined here. We've already talked about how mixing textures makes an interior more interesting and cozy. And here, you've used a lot of wood including this bold contrasting element like this table. Tell us, is this also about bringing some local culture into minimalism or what's the idea behind it? This is recycled timber. Um, this actually comes parts from a bridge in the area. Mm. We have, and uh, we're buying bulk uh, of that and then get it recycled into uh, furniture pieces or art pieces or other elements that make this space more cozy and more friendly. You can use elements like an old chair an antique table or something similar as a contrasting element in your minimalist interior. This will also make the space feel cozier. Tell us about the living area and a very important question. Why is there no TV here? There's personal story. My personal story is I don't have TVs anywhere because I think we have too much screen time and I think it is good for people to spend a bit of time talking to each other. But in terms of the actual layout, again, we come back to the same question. Who is using this space? Mm -hmm. So this is an eight-seater place. We have some additional space so you can have up to 12 people sitting here, mm -hmm. which is the absolute maximum for this space. It's always a simple count who is using the space in which scenarios. When we create our interiors, we also develop a technical brief to understand what people will actually be doing in the space. For example, who is this person? How often do they go to work? What do they do? How do they relax? Do they watch TV? Do they have sports equipment? All of this is built into the technical brief, which then forms the basis of the interior design. It's not just about fulfilling the designer architect's vision, it's about creating a lifestyle scenario that makes life comfortable and convenient. We design homes and interiors for the people who will actually live in them. So if you want to order an amazing design project or create a great architectural space, feel free to contact our studio. Check out the link in the description below. I know you actually have a TV here, so show us where it is.
so this here is a small TV room. What we're trying to do here is to really separate the TV experience from the social experience. So that way, yes, the kids or even the family, we can come in here and we can watch TV, but we don't disrupt our social communication with our people and uh, we don't bring the passive experience into the living room. Tell us, please, what kind of material is used on the floor? This is a slate stone. It's a slate. Um, it's a very natural stone, very, very hard stone. This is very important because this is a mainly rented to tourists. Mm -hmm. And you always have to think about materials have to be durable. I wanted to ask you about the lighting setups here. What kind of lighting scenarios have you implemented? The lighting here is actually very simple. We don't use any colors or we don't use anything because we're trying to bring out the, the, the honest feeling of the space. So we lighting landscape and of course we have different interior lightings. What is important for lighting is that again you think about usage scenarios. So you, you need a lighting scenario that is very that is strong. So if you need to see, if you need to clean, if you need to you know see the space, you need to have a strong lighting. And then you can create different zones for scenarios. You might have a dinner lighting, you might have cooking lighting and you might have a living lighting. Each of those scenarios should be balanced. So you need to look at how you wire the lighting to create different scenarios with the same lights. I'd also like to add that lighting scenarios can really help make an interior feel cozy. You can use recessed lighting behind cornices, floor lamps or focused decorative lighting and it will create a warm inviting atmosphere in the evenings. It's amazing how you can fully open up the windows and seamlessly connect the outdoor space with the indoors. Could you share a bit about the outdoor area beyond the indoor space? Again, um, what we're trying to do is we try to optimize the space. The trick here is the landscape. We're using the landscape to create a sense of space. It's a small space with a relatively big pool, but we, we're blocking uh, the walls and the background with the landscape so to give a sense of infinity. Great idea to use bags instead of lounge chairs. The best part is that you can leave them outside without worrying about them getting wet because they're waterproof. Plus, you can even throw them in the water and float on them. Could you tell us what material is used on the facades here? This is simple black stone. What is interesting about this stone is it is used also by all the temples locally. If you go to any temple in Bali, they will use this stone. It's a black stone, very local volcanic stone. By the way, one of my apartments is styled after a volcanic island with the bathroom designed to mimic volcanic stone. Since volcanic stone isn't available in Russia, I used a special plaster to achieve the look. If you're interested in seeing this apartment, check out the video linked in the description. The use of color is, is important, you know, what type of color. So for example, here you can see we're using black color in the back. And this is not only because it's black villas, but it's also because black color create, it gets lost. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring the plantation out and lose the background. Mm -hmm. So in the same way here, yes, of course it's a shade, but we also want to lose the space. We don't want to draw the eye. To this space. A lot of people are afraid to use black because they think it makes the space feel smaller. But in reality, black is the color of infinity and it can actually hide a lot of things. So don't hesitate to use black. It can actually make the space feel more expansive. I have a question about the suspended ceilings. I see that the ceiling here is made of drywall. Don't any animals get in there? I think it's a very good point here. Um, the nature is very strong. So you really have to plan for that. Make sure that every empty space is completely sealed. And when I say sealed, don't just cover it with bricks. You need to have seals in terms of plastic or wire mesh or any other ways to completely seal it. Another question about mold. Could you please tell me how you deal with mold in such a humid climate? It's actually quite simple if you know what you're doing. Mold can come from two sides. It can come, well, three sides. It can come from the bottom, yeah. it can come from the side, and it can come from the top. So from the bottom, you must seal your, your land. So whether this is through a sealant layer, so that mold, that, that humidity cannot come from the bottom. From the side, in Bali, we always have very uh, big overhangs mm -hmm. so that there is a, is a filter for rain and for, for humidity to come in. And then from the top, I think it's pretty straightforward. You need to have a roof that doesn't mm. leak. Make sure to use these tips in very rainy climates to help get rid of mold. Friends, if you want to make your home cozier, you can use decor. However, people often choose small decorative items, but the right approach is to use larger, more significant pieces. For example, like here, big matching vases or a large vase with a plant. Don't be afraid to use big decor pieces as they will make your interior cozier and better. 
another point for making spaces cozy, I think, is to really think about the detail of usage. For example, loose furniture like chairs or sofas, etc. When you buy a sofa or when you specify a sofa, make sure you sit on it and you don't just sit on it for one minute, you sit on it for 10 minutes. Yes, guys, always make sure to check the furniture you'll be sitting on. It shouldn't just look cozy, but it should also feel comfortable and pleasant to sit on. Sofas, cushions, chairs, all of it should be both visually cozy and cozy in use. Minimalism demands order, and for that you need to plan for enough storage space. Otherwise, you'll end up with shoes and everything else scattered around. Here, there's a closet under the stairs, and if we open the doors, all the mess from the chute is hidden in there. Close it, and voila, clean and tidy. To make the space more interesting, you can design it on different levels. For example, part of the entryway here is on the upper level. Then you step down a few stairs and find yourself in the lower part with the kitchen, living and dining area. And upstairs, there's the bedroom. Let's go check it out. These are the same elements you've used in other rooms as well. It's same local elements, it's day-to-day -day life of this yeah. area. People use it for rice, they use it for offering, mm -hmm. they use it for different things to prepare. It's a very natural, standard way to interact in daily life. Can you explain how you made the door in the ceiling? Is there no need for a lintel or is it hidden inside? It's actually very simple. Um, we're using uh, uh, built-in hinges here mm -hmm. and we don't have, we, we drop the frame. The why we like it is because it reduces lines. So if you want to have minimalism, you want to have minimal lines and this will help us to reduce your lines, you know. Um, so very simple, only vertical lines in this space. I really love that you can see the temple from here and I also appreciate the idea of the villa which incorporates the black rock theme. The temple is so beautiful and blends perfectly with the house. Could you please tell us more about the bedroom? The first thing about a bedroom is always about size. Try to think carefully about the size of the bedroom. A relatively small bedroom with ensuite bathroom. For that reason we usually have light coming from one side, only from one side. And then this is a short-term stay, so we have very small wardrobes that are enough for three, four days, and then a luxurious bathroom with a nice shower and windows as well. The bathroom is right across from the bed, so you can actually see yourself and anyone lying in bed in the reflection. It's quite amusing. The sink here is made from a solid piece of stone. You can't see the drain because there's a little cover that you can remove. To access it, it looks like one continuous piece of stone. On one side, there's a shower area completely made of black stone. One thing I would add is that it's quite inconvenient when the faucet is right above the shower. It's much better to place it somewhere like over here, so you can adjust the water without getting soaked. The best reward for making this video is your likes and positive comments. And of course, ask away. Johannes will answer all your questions. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.